Hey y'all and welcome back to the party. It's me, your girl Britt Reacts, and today we are reacting to Entropy Fan? Entropy Fan? Probably saying it wrong either way. This is George Carlin. Let's see what he has to say. Good to have a little sip of this. The water, I assume, is still safe to drink in New York, huh? No. Actually, Don't. actually, I gotta be fair with you. I'm only setting you up a little bit. It's just a, a not a trick question, but it's just a setup because I don't really care about the water, to tell you the truth. I just love to hear the answer to that question. I ask that question everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I say, how's the water? Haven't gotten a positive answer yet. Not one. Last year, I was in 40 states, 100 cities. Not one audience was able to say to me, yes, enjoy some of our fine local water. <laughs> it is pure and it is good. Of course, I know a lot of people don't talk that way anymore, but nobody trusts the local water supply. Nobody. And that amuses me. I like that. I admit I'm a bit perverted, but it amuses me that no... Wait, what? <laughs> um... If it came down to an emergency, I think I would drink New York faucet water. There are some places that I've had pretty bad faucet water. Uh, New York is not the worst of them. Uh, it is, it, I mean, it's, it is an interesting thing, though, because how often nowadays do you see someone drinking tap water? That's so true. And I don't know when this was filmed, but it's even less now. I, I have my very best friend and her twin sister. I used to spend a lot of time at their house, and they only drank tap water. Like, her mom would fill a pitcher and put it in the refrigerator. Actually, I don't even think it went in the refrigerator. I think it sat on the counter. They liked room temperature water. And I think... That might be the only house that I ever frequented that drank tap water. Uh, and when I, okay, so I used to go to New Jersey too, and I feel like my dad's side of the family would drink tap water and put ice in it. But yeah, I don't know. I'm like, what, is it so bad? I just don't drink it because I feel like it's taboo. It's like people look at you like you're nuts. That might be shallow to say, but it's the truth. I've never had like a run-in with bad tap water. That has like made me sick. I've had a run in with bad tap water that tastes like toilet bowl water. That I've had. Anyway, I've gone off on a crazy rant. Let's let George go on his crazy rant. I like that. I admit I'm a bit perverted, but it amuses me that no one can really trust the water anymore. They're still yelling about the water. And the thing I like about it the most is it means the system is beginning to collapse and everything is slowly breaking down. I enjoy chaos and disorder, not just because they help me professionally. <laughs> they're also my hobby. You see, I'm an entropy fan. I'm an entropy fan. What when is I first entropy heard of entropy mean? in high school science, I was attracted to it immediately. When they told me that in nature, all systems are breaking down, I thought, what a good thing. What a good thing. Perhaps I can make some small... All right, I'm Googling entropy because... I don't know what that means. <laughs> Entropy. I'm Googling it on my phone. E Physics. A thermodynamic. Hold on, guys. I'm going to get this. Therm thermodynamic. Oh, my gosh. Am I okay? Thermodynamic quantity representing the unavailability of systems thermal energy for conversion into mechanical work, often interpreted as the degree of disorder or randomness in the system. Lord. Number two, lack of order or predictability, gradual decline into disorder. Number three, a, oh, another big word. I'm not even going to try. Uh, got it, though. I understand. It's just what he said. He likes chaos and disorder. I don't like chaos and disorder, but like, I think for all intents and pur purposes, I do all right with it. You know what I mean? Like, if I got to deal with it, I will. Breaking down, I thought, what a good thing. What a good thing. Perhaps I can make some small contribution in this area myself. <laughs> and of course, it's not just in nature. In this country, the whole social structure just beginning to collapse. You watch. Just beginning now to come apart at the edges and the seams. And the thing I like about that 
is that it means it makes the news on television more interesting. <gasps> it makes the television news more exciting. That's makes true. Makes it more fun. I watch television news for one thing and one thing only. Entertainment. That's all I want from the news. Entertainment. You know my favorite thing on television? Bad news. Bad news and disasters and accidents and catastrophes. I want to see some explosions and fires. I want to see shit blowing up and bodies flying around. Lord. I'm not interested in the budget. I don't care about tax negotiations. I don't want to know what country. All right. He's not wrong. I'm like, gosh, that sounds terrible, but do I want to hear about budgets and all that stuff? No. Would I rather hear about, like, the awful things going on? I don't know about rather, but, like, one is going to keep my attention more than the other, you know? I mean, even though turning on the news today, these days, is so sad. Oh, my good gracious. I'm not interested in the budget. I don't care about tax negotiations. I don't want to know what country the fucking Pope is in. But you show me a hospital that's on fire and people on crutches are jumping off the roof and I'm a happy guy! I'm a happy guy! Oh my gosh. I'm a happy guy! I want to see a paint factory blowing up. I want to see an oil refinery explode. I want to see a tornado hit a church on Sunday. Oh. I want to see people... I want to know there's some guy running oh. to the Kmart with an automatic weapon firing at the clerks. Well, George... If you would have hung out with us a little longer, oh, geez, Louise, all of this is really awful because all of it's happening. Oh, I want to see thousands of people in the street killing policemen. I want to hear about a nuclear meltdown. I want to know the stock market dropped 2000 points in one day. I want to see people under pressure, sirens, flames, smoke, bodies, graves being filled, parents weeping, exciting shit, my kind of TV. I just want some entertainment. It's just the kind of guy I am. It's the kind of guy I am. You know what I love the most? When big chunks of concrete and fiery wood are falling out of the sky and people are running around trying to get out of the way. <laughs> Exciting shit. That, that sounds like a Marvel movie. It sounds like you want to be in a Marvel movie, George. That's why I watch auto racing. That's the only reason I watch auto racing. I'm waiting for some accidents. The crash. Man. I want to see some cars on fire. No. I don't care about a bunch of redneck jackoffs driving 500 miles in a circle. 500 miles in a circle. Children can do that, for Christ's sake. Doesn't impress me. I want to see some schmuck with his hair on fire running around punching his own head. Trying to put it out. Sure. I want to see the pits explode. I want to see a car doing a 200 mile an hour cartwheel. Hey, where else besides auto racing am I going to see a 23 car collision and not be in the son of a bitch? <laughs> and if a car flies out of control, lands in the. Okay. All right. That was funny. He's like, either it's going to be me piled up or you on that racetrack doing 500 miles an hour in a circle stands and kills 50 spectators fine fuck them serves them right they paid to get in let them take their chances with everybody else just means more fun for me more fun for me hey at least i admit it at least i admit it most people won't admit to those feelings most people see something like that on television they'll say oh isn't that awful isn't that too bad <laughs> lying asshole <laughs> lying assholes sure. you love it and you know it explosions are fun and hey, the closer the explosion is to your house, the more fun it is. Did you ever notice that? Sometimes you have the TV on and you're working around the house. Some guy comes on television and says, 6,000 people were killed in an explosion today. You say, where, where? He says, in Pakistan. You say, oh, fuck Pakistan. <laughs> Too far away to be any fun. No. Says, I don't want that anywhere near me. No. <gasps> oh, my gosh. My grandmother. My only surviving grandparent, God bless her. She's, she watches the news all day long, on rotation, same 12 stories, just all day, every hour. And if anything remotely happens in the state that I'm in, like in the state, it doesn't have to be within three hours of me. She's on my phone. What school again is the name of the school your daughter goes to? She'll hear something about a school. She's calling me. I'm like, Nana. We live five hours from there. <laughs> what was the name of that hospital that's up the street from your house? Didn't you say you live next door to a Zaxby's? It's like, girl. <laughs> I don't want anything that close to me. No, thank you. <laughs> no. In an explosion today. You say, where, where? He says, in Pakistan. You say, oh, fuck Pakistan. <laughs> Too far away to be any fun. 
But if he says it happened in your hometown, you'll say, whoa, hot shit. Come on, Dave. Let's go look at the bodies. Let's go look at the bodies. I love bad news. I love bad news. Hey, the more bad news there is, the faster this system collapses. Fine by me. Fine by me. Don't bother my ass. Don't bother my ass, none. I'm glad the water sucks. I'm glad it sucks. You know what I do about it? I drink it. Oh. Unless, unless it really smells, if it really smells a lot like sulfur, oh, yeah. then oh, I yeah. might buy a soda. <laughs> but it's got to be a soda loaded with chemical additives. <sighs> I like... <sighs> yeah, it's like pick your poison. I, the college town that I, I went to, the water there, y'all, I mean, it smelled bad. It came out brown. And I'll never remember, like, my hair from showering and like washing my hair in the water was destroyed in my first like six months of college like brittle just breaking off water really does matter but in the terms of drinking it's like okay you're not gonna drink the water but you will go drink a coca-cola that's full of like all kinds of bad things for you picking your poison he's got a point but it's got to be a soda loaded with chemical additives I like a lot of chemical additives in the things I eat and drink. See, I'm not one of these people who's worried about everything. You got people like this around you. Country's full of them now. People walking around all day long, every minute of the day, worried about everything. Worried about the air, worried about the water, worried about the soil. Worried about insecticides, pesticides, food additives, carcinogens. Worried about radon gas, worried about asbestos. Worried about saving endangered species. Let me tell you about endangered species, all right? Saving endangered species is just one more arrogant attempt by humans to control nature. It's arrogant meddling. It's what got us in trouble in the first place. Doesn't anybody understand that? Interfering with nature. Over 90%, over, way over, 90% of all the species that have ever lived on this planet, ever lived, are gone. They're extinct. We didn't kill them all. They just disappeared. That's what nature does. They disappear these days at the rate of 25. Okay, but here's my question with that, because I don't not believe it, but I'm just like, how come some things, animals and things survive and others go extinct, if that is the case, if it's not humans like poaching and, you know, knocking down their natural habitats and all the other things? Like, how do some things survive and others don't? This is what I love about George Carlin because he's always going to make me think. He's always going to make me like go way past anything I would have ever thought about on a regular Sunday afternoon, you know. <laughs> That's what nature does. They disappear these days at the rate of 25 a day. And I mean regardless of our, our behavior. Irrespective of how we act on this planet, 25 species that were here today will be gone tomorrow. Let them go gracefully. Leave nature alone. Haven't we done enough? We're so self-important. So self-important. Everybody's going to save something now. Or if that is the case, and does that mean all the species that are on the planet now were not here a thousand years ago? These are all newer species? Someone, anyone, explain this to me in the comments. I'm not... I'm not a National Geographic girl. I'm not into like science and all those things. I'm very interested in, in the topic because he's talking about it, but like I have no clue. Save the trees, save the bees, save the whales, save those snails. <laughs> and the greatest arrogance of all, save the planet. What? Are these fucking people kidding me? What? <laughs> save the planet? We don't even know how to take care of ourselves yet. We haven't learned how to care for one another. We're gonna save the fucking planet? I'm getting tired of that shit. This planet needs saving from us. <laughs> the planet is probably trying to rally uh, with all the other planets against us. Okay? Another, we're going to save the fucking planet? I'm getting tired of that shit. Tired of that shit. Tired. I'm tired of fucking Earth Day. I'm tired of these self-righteous environmentalists, these white bourgeois liberals who think the only thing wrong with this country is there aren't enough bicycle paths. <laughs> People trying to make the world safe for their Volvos. Besides, 
Environmentalists don't give a shit about the planet. They don't care about the planet. Not in the abstract, they don't. Not in the abstract, they don't. You know what they're interested in? A clean place to live. Their own habitat. They're worried that someday in the future they might be personally inconvenienced. Narrow, unenlightened self-interest doesn't impress me. Besides, there is nothing wrong with the planet. Nothing wrong with the planet. The planet is fine. The people are fucked. <laughs> Difference. Difference. Bingo. The planet is fine. Compared to the people, the planet is doing great. It's been here four and a half billion years. Do you ever think about the arithmetic? Planet has been here four and a half billion years. We've been here, what, 100,000? Maybe 200,000? And we've only been engaged in heavy industry. It's, that's so crazy to think about, like how long the planet has been here. And the planet has done just just fine, like surviving us, humans, humanity, thus far, thus far. Uh, I don't know what you believe as far as the, uh, you know, the global warming crisis and all these things. But up until now, the planet is still here. And so everyone watching this would probably be long gone before the planet is. So he's very right. It's like y'all are worried about saving the planet. The plan is trying to get away from you and I, okay? For a little over 200 years. 200 years versus four and a half billion. And we have the conceit to think that somehow we're a threat? That somehow we're going to put in jeopardy this beautiful little blue-green ball that's just a floating around the sun? The planet has been through a lot worse than us. Been through all kinds of things worse than us. Been through earthquakes, volcanoes, plate tectonics, continental drift, solar flares, sunspots, magnetic storms, the magnetic reversal of the poles, hundreds of thousands of years of bombardment by comets and asteroids and meteors, worldwide floods, tidal waves, worldwide fires, erosion, Lord have waves, mercy. ice ages, and we think some plastic bags <laughs> and some aluminum cans are going to make a difference? The planet... The planet. The planet isn't going anywhere. We are. <laughs> We're going away. Pack your shit, folks. We're going away. And we won't leave much of a trace either. Thank God for that. Maybe a little styrofoam. Maybe. A little styrofoam. Planet huh, styrofoam. Will be long gone. Just another failed mutation. Just another closed end biological mistake. An evolutionary cul de sac. The planet will shake Biological us off like mistake. A, bag of a surface nuisance. <laughs> you want to know how the planet's doing? So I'm saying the, the planet's just going to shake us off and continue planeting. The planet is going to planet. All right, y'all. <laughs> You want to know how the planet's doing? Ask those people at Pompeii who are frozen into position from volcanic ash how the planet's doing. Want to know if the planet's all right? Ask those people in Mexico City or Armenia or a hundred other places buried under thousands of tons of earthquake rubble if they feel like a threat to the planet this week. This how about week. those people in Kilauea, Hawaii who build their homes right next to an active volcano and then wonder why they have lava in the living room. Mm. What do you say? What do you say? I'm actually excited to hear some answers to the questions that I had because I don't know a lot about this subject. So let me know and go have the day you deserve. Peace.